Thank you, Monica. Being in your greenhouse is like being in a paradise. That was really great. Well, today I'm sitting in for uh, Tom Spencer. I'm Linda Lamus Ford, and normally the producer behind the camera. But today I'm so honored to be here with staff uh, writer for The New Yorker, Susan Orlean. She has just published a new book, Rin 1010, The Life and the Legend. But a lot of us gardeners know her from The Orchid Thief. Fabulous to have you. Thanks I'm, for being here. I'm delighted to be here. Well, tell us uh, what kind of started The Orchid Thief. For the people who haven't read it yet or haven't yet heard about it, what was the story behind it? It was a complete accident, I have to say. I, if, I remember at some point while I was working on the book saying, if you had asked me, would I be walking through a swamp in South Florida looking for wild orchids, I would have said, you're crazy. What happened was I was flying home from a vacation. I'd run out of things to read. I was rustling around in the seat pocket, which, you know, normally you don't want to go in there very far. But <laughs> someone had left a Miami Herald in there. And I thought, well, I'll just browse through it. I was bored. And I always like to look for the little stories that are kind of tucked in the corners of, of a newspaper. And I saw this headline, local nurseryman arrested with rare orchids. And I thought, well, that's a weird story. I think I'll read that. And it described this arrest that had just taken place. Now, to give you an idea of how naive I was and how ignorant I was of orchids at the time, I thought, I didn't know orchids grew wild. I didn't yeah. know you could find orchids in South Florida. And also, more significantly, I thought, why would you steal orchids out of a swamp? Why wouldn't you just go to Home Depot and exactly. buy them? It was the kind of story that I couldn't resist. I remember tearing out the, the piece from the newspaper, and I thought, I think this might be a great story. When I got back to New York, I went into my editor, and I said, I have no idea what this is about, but there's something interesting here. So I went back to Florida, sat in at the initial hearing in the arrest of John LaRoche and a few seminal men who were with him to hear what was this all about? Why would you steal orchids? The minute I saw John LaRoche, and he is one of the more fascinating characters you could imagine coming across, in the middle of his hearing, he announced to the judge that he was the smartest person he knew. <laughs> and I thought, I like this guy. I mean, as a subject, sure. I like this guy. And his description of why he was pursuing the orchids was just absolutely fascinating. Everything connected to the orchid world, all of which was new to me, was completely intriguing. And I, I just knew I had to keep working on it and write a book. And so how long a process was it to write a book like this? Uh, it, would pr it probably was about three and a half years, all told, um, working pretty steadily on it. And I spent a lot of time back down in Florida with John LaRoche, with other orchid growers, as well as um, a lot of time in libraries doing a lot of historical research, which I had no idea there was this rich, complex, absolutely intriguing history of orchids as botanical creatures and also historical, uh, the, the story of orchids in our culture and what people have done in order to obtain them. That's one of the things I love about the book is the history of, of passion, really and then the evolutionary aspects of orchids, and just some of the botanical things that fascinate us, like how they breed mm -hmm. and how long it takes. And then you describe some of the weather aspects and uh, how some of these orchids show up. Like, what is the thing of the seeds along the median? What is, what is that all about? It was an amazing realization um, during, you know, the terrible hurricane that had come in and actually wrecked much of the orchid industry in Florida. And it, w it was really sad, and a lot of people's livelihoods were, were lost. Thousands of orchids smashed, and greenhouses, of course, are not very sturdy structures, and in a hurricane, they're gonna be flattened. And there's no, by the way, no insurance that will cover the value of those oh, plants. No. 
because they fall somewhere in between mm -hmm. being agricultural and being something else. But one of the interesting outcomes that a lot of scientists mentioned to me is that a hurricane will bring new plants to an area. And it'll lift seeds, and particularly orchid seeds, which are so fine and so tiny, so they're very easily carried in air currents. Bring them, drop them down. And seven years later, you may see what got blown up from Mexico in the latest hurricane. It's how certain species, like the ghost orchid, probably got to Florida to begin with, that they were carried um, on air currents in a storm, in, uh, rather than some plants which are carried by birds, by insects. The, you know, orchid seeds are too fine to, to fall into that category. And I just thought, this is, this is amazing. This is just remarkable. So scientists were saying, you know, seven, eight years after a big hurricane, it's always interesting to see what species, non-native species, will pop up. It has to be carried there in the wind. It has to fall into an environment, a microenvironment that's actually suitable for that seed. It has to not get eaten. It has to, you know, so there are a lot of factors that go into it. And that's why it's kind of remarkable that these plants, which have a very almost uh, human desire to live and propagate, will carry on. I think that's amazing. And I think one thing that's fascinating is that they do it and that we treasure that. Gardeners can have an exceeding amount of patience to wait seven or eight yeah. years for a plant, but it all starts with <clears throat> passion. Mm -hmm. You find one little plant, or like you said, you would go to all these shows and stare into the petals. What is the craziest, most fun orchid that you remember? There, there are countless that you I saw. I know. Well, there, there was one that I, uh, and I had said, I'm not going to start collecting orchids. I'm doing this book. As a journalist, I am not going to collect orchids. And of course, writing about people who are very passionate, as these people were, and being exposed to not the garden variety uh, orchid yeah. that you get at Home Depot, but the most amazing, rare, beautiful orchids in the world. And having people say, I want to take one. And I kept saying, no, no, stop, I don't want to. <laughs> but there, there were incredible ones, beautiful, um, these vandas that I had never, I don't think I'd ever seen a Vanda before. Amazing colors, some that smelled like chocolate, some that, some of the ones that were most incredible were the orchids that look exactly like the insect that pollinates them. So much so that you just, it, no weird. one could argue against Darwin after seeing one of these orchids that looks exactly like the pollinator and that they trick the insect, or in some cases a bat or a moth, into thinking it's a mate. That was And incredible. the insect or bat or where, whatever will mate, of course, to no good end, but... Who um, knows? Yeah, who <laughs> knows true. what's going to happen actually, someday? Who knows, exactly. But, and in some cases, they've evolved to look like an enemy of the insect it needs. It's, it's almost eerie. It's, it, it is. You know, it's it was nice. something that, first of all, made you appreciate the enormity of time in the universe because the millions and mi millions of genetic changes that had to take place to make this plant look like this insect. You know, we're talking billions of years of incremental changes and it, it was very, it was awe-inspiring. It really humbled me to think we're just this tiny little speck compared to what has led to these plants with their remarkable variety and, and their incredible talent for being alive. Mm -hmm. That's, well, I love this book. And if you read The Orchid Thief a few years ago, but now you're a gardener and you want to hear some evolutionary tales, some incredible stories of passion, and learn something about the evolution of life and a little bit more about Susan herself. Please do check out The Orchid Thief. And thank you so much for being here. It's such a pleasure. Thank you. Yes. And now we're on to our friend Daphne Richards.